afternoon, everyone. My name is Georgia Brabeck, and I'm a senior at the University of San Francisco in the Art History and Museum Studies program. And today I'm very excited to present to you my research on Kana Yamamoto and the search for modern Japanese artistic identity. In 1860, after more than 200 years of isolation, Japan entered the increasingly complex global political stage. Fueled by the goal of modernizing the nation as quickly as possible, the Meiji government promoted the systematic restructuring of institutions and customs based on Western models. The, as traditional ways of life were abandoned in the name of progress, some began to wonder whether Japanese culture had to be forsaken in the pursuit of modernity. In other words, were modernization and Westernization truly one and the same? This question was a chief concern for Meiji artists, who found themselves caught between differing pictorial traditions. This was certainly the case for painter and printmaker Kana Yamamoto, whose artistic evolution, I will argue, encapsulates the broader effort of Japanese society to assert their national identity in the midst of the increasingly global modernist movement. Yamamoto was a pioneer in a genre of Japanese printmaking called sosakohanga, or the creative print movement. Departing from traditional ukiyo-e printing methods, in which the printmaking process was executed by a series of craftsmen, a Sosaku Hanga printmaker executed all aspects of production himself. These artists sought to imbue the woodblock printmaking process with Western-inspired ideas such as humanism and individualism by capturing the purest expression of their own creative impulses. Yamamoto's Fisherman is widely considered the inceptive work of this movement, spurring a larger reconsideration of the role of the artist and expressions of individuality. Despite having established himself within Tokyo's printmaking scene, Yamamoto, in the words art historian Helen Merritt, quote, harbored the old Japanese belief that painting is the true and significant mark of an artist, unquote. He set sail for Paris in July of 1912 with aspirations of perfecting his skill in yoga, or Western-style oil painting. He had honed his skills at the Tokyo School of Fine Arts with, instructions, with instruction from artists including one of the leading pioneers in this area, Seiki Kuroda. Yamamoto's painting during this period exemplified here in his 1905 work, Mosquito Net, shows clear evidence of Kuroda's influence. These muted, domestic genre scenes were executed in the standard painterly realist style that was characteristic of Parisian academy paintings, no doubt introduced to Yamamoto by Kuroda, who had spent time in Paris himself. In all likelihood, Kuroda's stories of his own sojourn inspired his mentee, fueling his romanticized perception of the West and his desire to master academic style painting. Yamamoto continued to make prints throughout his time in Europe, many of which were produced during his six-week stay in the French region of Brittany in 1913. Bathers in Brittany is a painterly print that lacks a key block, a characteristic initial layer of traditional Japanese printmaking used to give the composition structure through graphic outlines. The result is a loose, subtle composition in which the bathers almost blend into their surroundings. Yamamoto intentionally manipulated the colors of these prints, diluting the pigments to achieve the muted pastel range he saw in French paintings, such as those of Pierre Puy de Chalon. The stylized color palette removes the print from reality, suspending its subjects in a soft, dreamlike moment outside the confines of time. The rural subject matter of this print is also noteworthy. Yamamoto wrote that he felt largely uninspired while in France, particularly while in its major urban centers. Perhaps the isolating nature of living in Paris without the ability to speak French made cityscapes a hindrance to the creative process rather than a source of inspiration. Furthermore, the picturesque landscapes that Yamamoto designed are free of global influence. Bathers in Brittany presents a world that is entirely French. By the time he arrived in France, elements of traditional Japanese art, particularly woodblock printmaking, had been appropriated by European printmakers and integrated into modernist art movements in a phenomenon known as Japanese book. As a result, the painting styles dominating the Parisian art scene did not coincide with that of Yamamoto's studies. In Paris, he was forced to confront a reality in which the purely Western-style painting techniques that he had devoted his career to simply no longer existed, at least in their unaltered state. Rather, the traditional Japanese artistic style that he had essentially renounced was deemed cutting-edge and decidedly modern. Outside of Paris, the French countryside presented Yamamoto with the pure and untouched image of the West that he had most likely hoped to find. Yamamoto's disappointments were exacerbated by the outbreak of the First World War, 
as museums were closed to the public and travel through Europe was restricted. In 1916, after more than four years in France, Yamamoto decided it was time to return to Japan. The ongoing war made travel through the Suez Canal impossible, forcing him to take an alternate route across Russia. Arriving in Moscow less than a year before the Russian Revolution, Yamamoto was struck by the palpable tension that he encountered there. In one of his correspondences, he wrote the quote, the state of peasant life in Russia is quite terrible, and it seems like they might want to consider having a revolution of some kind, unquote. <laughs> Yamamoto spent about four months in the area around Moscow, particularly at Yasnaya Polyana, former home of the great Russian author Leo Tolstoy. At the estate, which has since been reestablished as a school by Alexander Tolstoy, Yamamoto found inspiration in the ideas of individualism and self-cultivation promoted by Tolstoy and his European contemporaries. He was inspired by their argument that art could critique society at large and serve as a means to access and to nurture individualism by forging a personal connection between man and nature. Yamamoto was drawn to the blending of community collectivism and personal creative autonomy in exhibitions of farmers and children's art. These movements were centered on nurturing and promoting the artistic production of children and farmers, empowering them to express their innate creativity. Inspired by these movements and their ability to uplift the people of Russia, Yamamoto later wrote, quote, while I was staying in Moscow in the summer of 1916, I felt that I had two important missions. One was the promotion of children's free painting, and the other was the establishment of farmer's art in Japan, unquote. The woodblock prints that he created depicting Moscow feature bold colors and are a clear departure from the muted tones of his Puvis de Chauvin inspired prints in Brittany. A street in Moscow features a painterly and expressive version of a traditional key block, outlining the compositional elements and framing the fields of color. His inclusion of a key block is evidence that, for the first time in his European inspired works, Yamamoto was beginning to experiment with the integration of traditional Japanese printmaking conventions. This sentiment is especially evident in Women of Brittany, the last of Yamamoto's European studies. A woman in traditional Breton dress occupies the majority of the composition, set against a simple and serene background in which the ocean meets the sky at the horizon. If not for the woman's traditional costume, this nondescript background could set the composition almost anywhere. The print features a fully articulated key block that creates the dark outlines of the woman's face and body. The image's clean outlines and relative flatness make it more congruent with the visual language of traditional Japanese woodcuts. However, the framing of the composition and the woman's three-quarter view positioning is characteristic of Western-style portraiture. The print's combination of Japanese and Western pictorial traditions is a truly syncretic approach to modernizing Japanese art. In many ways, Woman of Brittany is the culmination of Yamamoto's search for a modern Japanese approach to art production. Retrospectively merging the various stages of his journey, Woman of Brittany employs imagery of rural France to convey Russian ideology through Japanese-style printmaking. This, print, this Breton woman becomes a stand-in for peasants everywhere, a celebration of the country folk that had inspired Yamamoto's new understanding of modernism. Helen Merritt succinctly describes the development of his artistic rationale, arguing that, quote, in order to express his strong humanistic feelings, he broke through the network of Western aesthetic values which had tormented him in Europe and, perhaps unconsciously, accepted the two-dimensional surface." Unquote. The great irony is that only after immersing himself in Western visual culture did this great Japanese artist begin to experiment with his native artistic traditions. Only by confronting and deconstructing the Western mystique could Yamamoto find an approach to producing Japanese art that was distinctly modern. The evolution of Yamamoto's approach to printmaking during and immediately after his European sojourn is especially indicative of his artistic development. He originally set out to study yoga, only to realize that academic oil painting did not necessarily embody modernism in the West as it did in Japan. Electing to instead return to, to his artistic roots, it was woodblock printmaking that became Yamamoto's primary medium when promoting art education for children and farmers in Japan. As an affordable and reproducible means of creation, it went against the elitist art world that Yamamoto witnessed in Paris. Put simply, printmaking became the art of the people. Perhaps the best evidence that Yamamoto's European sojourn reshaped his artistic practice and rationale is Yawn of an Artist, a book that he wrote and published in 1921 as a means of rethinking his experience abroad and his role as an artist in society. 
In it, he concludes that Japanese artists need to be proponents of social development, and that the people of Japan should seek to be more open and expressive. Yamamoto's ideological development and the search for his artistic voice parallel the greater Japanese effort to define and enact modernization on their own terms. In both cases, imitating Western conventions proved inadequate in the search for modernism. It was only by reflecting on and reincorporating native traditions in a unified, syncretic approach that Yamamoto and early 20th century Japanese nation builders were able to articulate their identity in the modern world. Thank you.